what are the sources of the circulating stasis uh, that defines the niche guard but is not limited to it? Taking a long view of history by reintroducing the often criticized but useful notion of the master narrative, I propose that the peoples of the world are engaged in a tripartite struggle, pitting Adam Smith's free market against Karl Marx's socialist guided economy, against religious fundamentalism, whether it be Islamic, Christian, Jewish, or Hindu. In other words, this three-part struggle, capitalism, socialism, uh, re religiosity. Yet these domains overlap. You can be a capitalist uh, Christian or Hindu or Arab or uh, Islamic, and you can be a fundamentalist uh, uh, socialist. Uh, these domains overlap, and individuals can belong to more than one domain. It is even possible, perhaps inevitable, that a considerable number of people are split inside themselves. But despite these overlaps and ruptures, human societies and the individuals who comprise those societies are in the midst of a centuries-long struggle about how to imagine and accomplish a better society, whether by means of Smith's invisible hand, Marx's from each according to his ability to each according to his needs, or divine guidance, but of course in the la latter case under the aegis of which God. When the narratives contradict one another, persons must choose which action to take or refrain from taking. However, such choosing is not a matter of individual choice alone. Leaders, elected or imposed, make choices that affect multitudes. These choices are neither determined nor the result of free will. There is as yet no means, and probably never will there be a way, to determine what, quote, guides this kind of decision making. I place the verb guides in quotation marks because the system in play appear to operate, uh, systems in play appear to operate of their own accord, even as they are also clearly a function of human intervention and choice. Again, the corporation operates seemingly autonomously. Much, most of today's intractable problems and flashpoints are at the fault lines of these thoroughly interlocked yet mutually contradictory systems. In other words, the tensions between socialism and capitalism, capitalism and fundamentalism, fundamentalism and socialism, that's where these things uh, come together. Uh, they, uh, that's where we're having ruptures and uh, 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 problems. The American war on terror has the quality not only of the Cold War, but of the Crusades on both sides. This Crusaders war also is a struggle for the control of markets. The war on terror is Janus faced, looking backwards to the European medieval epoch and forward to advanced capitalism. The Chinese leadership has devised its own version of a free market economy while actively suppressing dissension and worrying about the disintegration of the nation, that is Tibet, Taiwan, the Falun Gong, and other internal tensions. All this conflict without resolution keeps things moving, moving not forward, but around and around. And here is where the avant-garde comes in. With some notable fascist or fascist leading exceptions, the historical avant-garde was anarchist or on the left. Self-identifying as radical, progressive, alternative, Marxist, and fiercely against. But the niche artists, the current generation, are not against. Using New York as an example, young artists wait in line to clamor up the ladder from performances and lofts to small theaters like the collapsible Giraffe, to PS 122 or La Mama, and on to where very few arrive, the Lincoln Center Festival or the Brooklyn Academy of Music's Next Way Festival. And I have no idea whether the same thing operates here, whether the uh, Teatro Vertigem, am I pronouncing it more or less correctly? Yeah, Vertigem, uh, have any desires to move into larger market venues or not? Possibly not, that would be good, but they may. Uh, from the mid-levels on up, many of the artists and groups go international. They premiere their work wherever the money is, wherever sponsors can be found. Like Lexus or Sony, the niche guard has been tested and branded in the global market, acquiring a following in the press and public. <coughs> New York actually is home to relatively few premieres of the older, more expensive groups. Even mid-level groups such as Team look outside the USA for sponsoring venues where the creative core can devise new works. Now for 65 years, 
uh, since the end of World War II, humanity has suffered incredibly, but not generally. There has been no World War III. We have to remember that. The, the war, uh, since 1945, there have been, there's been no year without a war. But there's been no war like what happened between 39 and 45. And that's important. There's been terror about terror. There's been the presence of innumerable atomic weapons. But there's been no atomic bomb or rocket, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's something operating which, uh, you know, if we drifted in here from another galaxy, we might say is kind of optimistic. We have the means uh, uh, through military weapons and through uh, 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 viruses and germs that we could release, plague, to uh, really annihilate hundreds of millions of people, and it hasn't been done. We're choosing to annihilate our species step by step through ecological deprivation, but that's a different kind of situation. So uh, there has been no World War III. Instead, there's always a, quote, small war here, a genocide there, an ecological catastrophe somewhere else a terrorist attack, a reprisal. We live in the atmosphere of impending doom, forestall, forestalled by promises of huge technological, quote, breakthroughs. Will the ice caps melt? Will species diversity plummet? Will deserts expand? And so on. And will genetic engineering, electrical automobiles, windmills, and solar panels save us? And so on. Even though their power is decreasing, states remain strong enough to cause mayhem. The internet is impossible to govern, a fact both glorious and fearful. Terrorists operate outside of state control. Some regions such as Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, Israel, and parts of sub-Saharan Africa suffer for decades with no end in sight. American media create and export an obsessively repetitive infotainment by splicing human-made and natural disasters. A war, a tsunami, a famine, a spate of tortures, a car bomb, a plague, an assassination, a glass of water, thank you. Um, <laughs> a murder, an economic depression. In the American media, real events are dramatized and fictions are presented as real. It's all arranged in sequence that allows for maximum commercial exploitation. So I've, as I've said, after genocide, Mylanta, and after the news, the Simpsons. These strips of behavior are rebroadcast over and over. Because of media, especially TV, news, and the internet, events no longer seem to take place uniquely in specific times and places. I don't know if you know who Trisha Brown is. She was an experimental a dancer, still working. And man walking down a wall was, in a tenement and a man just came out at the edge and had uh, mountain climbing gear and walked down the wall and we watched in the streets. Except that it was not a man but a dancer, Elizabeth Streb, walking down the wall, which was not the side of a tenement building on the Lower East Side, but the sleek exterior wall of the Whitney Museum on classy Madison Avenue, uptown Manhattan. I stood in the crowd and felt a thrill of recollection I said to TDR's associate editor, Mary Ellen Sanford, who was next to me, this is good, it's really good, it hasn't aged, unquote. I was wrong. It had aged, we all have. And not even the most meticulous redoing can be the same as the first time. Circumstances change, audiences are different. Memory itself deprives the reperformance of its shock of the new. In the reperformances of the avant-garde I'm talking about, the audacity of the original gives over to the nostalgia of the repeat. This nostalgia is as reassuring as it is depressing. When a big chunk of the avant-garde no longer lives in the future but in the past, while another chunk is a brand, we as people, not just as artists, know that we live in a time of lost opportunities. In the 21st century, even more than in the 20th, we know what ails the world. But our leaders, and by proxy ourselves, are unable to effectively address, no less heal, what's wrong. Much of the niche guard answers not by blasting those who are corrupt and inept and an evil, but by repeating itself. I will say that what I saw last night does not suit that. I do feel that they were addressing these problems. Yet these cautious conservative enactments 
so unlike what the avant-garde used to be, is in line with what possibly is the best, the wisest instruction, reduce, recycle, and reuse. Why shouldn't art go green and make a smaller footprint? Is it bad that the avant-garde is conservative, that it excellently recycles its own best ideas and techniques? Is the way forward under the circumstances not moving at all? Are we in the situation of Beckett's Gogo and Didi waiting? Or am I misreading what's happening? Last year, uh, we had the Occupy Wall Street uh, movement in New York, in Zuccotti Park, appropriately enough located at the intersection of Liberty Street and Broadway in downtown Manhattan's financial district. The encampment of the protesters sparked similar anti-big wealth and equity protests around the world. Was there any such thing here? Yeah. yeah. Many people see in the Occupy movement the seeds of a resurgent activism. Now, I'm not sure that that has occurred because it seems to have subsided. But when I first wrote this, uh, it would seemed a little more possible. I spent about two and a half hours in the park with the Occupy Wall Streeters. I hadn't seen anything like it for many years. It felt like the start of something organic, flowing, good-natured, determined, and socialistic. A crowd of several thousand was on the cusp between middle class and poor, multi-ethnic but still predominantly white with a scattering of African Americans. Asians were visibly missing. I don't know why exactly. The crowd was mid-twenties to mid-thirties mostly, but with a substantial number of older people. Lots of camping out. This was before the police uh, cleared it. And uh, I went down the next week and I taught a class down there. So, uh, uh, among the well-educated crowd was anger at I took out big loans and got my education and now I'm in debt, but I can't get a job. I'm getting screwed by the big money guys, the politicians, the media. The underlying anger is against the system. And this makes a big opening for a resurgent socialism and anarchism. Where will this lead? I don't know. But I can say now, about a year after I wrote this, it hasn't led that far, uh, unfortunately. And probably the reason is the internet itself. In other words, it became a movement that could kind of join Facebook, something you could drop in out and drop out of, that you could uh, deal with by sending uh, 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 emails and sending protest letters and then occasionally show up as a kind of flash mob when called to show up. But it wasn't something sustainable. In other words, it, it, let's say that what happened in Tahrir Square in, in, in Egypt was because those people were desperate. There was no place else to go. It wouldn't work on the internet. And they, and they stayed there until they effected some change. And sometimes it doesn't change. The people in Tiananmen Square also were desperate and they stayed there and they got gunned down. The people in Syria are also desperate. And it's very uh, complex. So it, it's not always that you win, but I don't think the system can change uh, through uh, internet uh, uh, activities uh, only or even mostly. Uh, it finally uh, will take uh, something that really uh, d disrupts the powers that be, and I don't think that people are into that at the present moment. Um, all right. Now, in the United, speaking for the United States, and I can't speak for other countries, the current electoral system is rotten, controlled by lobbyists and special interests. The banks and what they represent symbolically, wealth, imbalance, greed, unemployment, and the squeezing down into poverty of large masses of people who look forward to living middle class lives. The, quote, enemy is known, but there is no clear road to what comes next. It was good to see this congealing of anger in the Occupy movement this recognition that something is wrong, basically, systematically. But there was no, there was no Port Huron statement, which is an older statement of, the, uh, of uh, uh, certainly what the youth could do with this case. I like very much that this is an umbrella rather than pinpoint movement, but where is it going? Uh, over time, here I predicted, over time the movement will be ignored and or co-opted, as Obama and the Democrats are already trying to do. There will be some bread and circuses, but no real redistribution of wealth and power. All right. Now to return and finally conclude this so we can... Uh, 
when we can uh, uh, have a discussion. I spoke to one of the younger directors uh, as I was working on this piece. Her name is Rachel Chavkin. She went to NYU. She's now in her late 20s. She and a group of her friends formed a, 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 a group called The Team. It, called, it means Team T-E-A-M, the Emerging uh, American T, the emer E, Emerging A, American Movement, the, American, the Emerging American Movement, a kind of ironic uh, title for her avant-garde group. Did very interesting things. And I told her my ideas, and um, she said the following to me. Or rather, she said the following to Carol Martin, my wife, who was writing about her. The work I was seeing, this is Chavkin speaking, the work I was seeing while I was an undergraduate was often aesthetically and politically miraculous, but also very often steeped in irony. I don't mean the off-the-cuff ironic. There was a profound sense that change was not possible in human beings. The politics of the country at that time reflected this sensibility. My generation is the product of a new youth movement that I think I hope has been reinvigorated. It seems like the political change is possible again and that the country believes in this possibility again." Unquote. And I ended by saying, show me. So uh, we'll see what happens. So that's about all I want to say at the present moment. Thank you.